Witness by Karen Hess Harvey and Viola Pettibone Harvey says The Ku Klux are here of I. There's not a thing to stop them. We might as well join them. Why not? They are not low down like some folks say. They're a good man. 100% American men. And they might bring us some business. Viola says In Texas, Harvey, those good men thought a certain fellow was keeping company with a married lady. They had no proof of hanky-panky Harv. They beat him anyway, held a pistol to his head, said they'd kill him if he didn't clear out. Harv, you don't want to join a group like that. But Harvey says, That's just rumour. They have parades via and picnics and speakers from all over. Wouldn't you like that? Picnics and speakers? Viola washes up the dinner dishes, her hands gloved in soapy water. They do good, Vi. They take care of their women, and liquor can't ever tear up a family with them around. Harvey examines a spot on one of, his, one of the glasses. Shouldn't we join, Vi? Viola shakes her head slowly back and forth. No, Harve, Viola says. I don't think we should. Reynard Alexander this paper is neutral. This editor is neutral. I have attempted to remain neutral in the face of the clan question, and I intend to continue neutral until I have reason to do otherwise. Leonora Sutter Teacher says Lewis won't be coming back to school. He got himself killed yesterday, playing in the sandbank. It buried him. Alone. He was alone. Lewis was always alone down to that sandbank, making big sand cities that he limped away from when his ma called him home for dinner. Big sand cities, Willie Pettibone, and those boys came in and wrecked. So, Lewis had to start again. This time, the sand slid right down on top of Lewis and buried him in the very city he was building. I'm being buried too, in all this whiteness. Iris Weaver. Well, how do you like that? Down in Texas, Mrs. Miriam Ferguson, the wife of the impeached governor, defeated the Klan candidate by 80,000 votes to win the Democratic nomination for her estate. If she wins, she'll be the first woman governor in this whole damn country. Imagine. Harvey and Viola Pettibone. If we join the Klan... Harvey says, we can wipe out Bronson's grocery by next year, Vi. All the clan members will shop here, even if they live closer to Bronson. Bronson's made his feelings clear against the clan clear. If we join up with them, how long could Bronson last? Six months? Nine? Viola says, and what about all our regulars, Harve? We make this store clan only. We lose a lot of business. Where do you think they'll all go? Harvey says, it doesn't matter. This little bit of business, it won't be enough to keep Bronson flush, Vi. You'll see. I don't think so, Viola says. Sarah Chickering. Folks ask why I never married. I watched my father swallow his breakfast whole and rush away, leaving mother with us children to be ready for school, lunch to be prepared for noon, washing to be done, and the fitting out of a big evening meal. Father would come home late, tired out, falling asleep in the best chair after supper, while Mother put the house to rights, got me, my brothers, my sister, and finally Father off to bed. From morning until night, every day of the week, that was Mother's life. Father got a holiday from time to time. Mother never did. That's why I moved out and came to work on the farm. Soon as I could, I boarded for my own. All these years, I've managed fine without a man. I may work as hard as my mother, but I'm a drudge to no one. Johnny Reeves We shall reign in the kingdom, neighbor. We shall form a great fist, and we shall steal those who oppose us. We shall strike them out, wipe them out, blot them out. Together we cast a long shadow, neighbor, and with our shadow, we cast our foes into darkness. 
we cast those who are not like us into the arms of Satan. Every one of the Lord's lambs wants the light shining on him, neighbor. Every lamb can see the right way when he is standing in the light of the Lord. Every lamb, once he has known the light, cannot endure the darkness. Come stand with me in the light, neighbor. Act 2 Leonora Sutter There was a boy in Chicago, a rich boy. He was kidnapped. The kidnappers wanted $10,000 from the boy's daddy to bring the boy back alive. Only he was already dead even before the ransom note came. The boy was already dead, naked in a ditch, miles away from his house. That boy was 14. And now he's dead. And he was rich. And he was white. Esther Hirsch My brain did get hurt yesterday. Doc Flitt says it did get hurt a little like Senator Green. I was having chasing games with Margaret, and I did fall and hit my head on a rock. The rock made big heart beatings in my eye. I did find my way home to Sarah Chickering, with the good dog Jerry helping me. But I didn't feel any good feelings anywhere. And then my eyes did only see darks. And I did get confused, and thinking I did drown in sand, the way Lewis did with his lame leg. And then Lewis did take my hand, and he gave me showings of the way back home to my nice little bed in Sarah Chickering's house. This morning I did wake up, and my brain is all good feelings again, and I can have seeing again, and all the darks is all gone, and the big heart beatings is just a little thump thumps. Doc Flit says, I'm like Senator Green, only I did get better so much faster. Purcell Johnson. The Chicago police did it. They solved the case of that murder. Fourteen-year-old Bobby Franks. It was the spectacles that led detectives to the slayers. Nathan Leopold Jr., son of a millionaire manufacturer, and Richard Loeb, his companion, were taken into custody for kidnapping and killing their neighbor. The reports say both Leopold and Loeb are smart students at the university in Chicago. They made full confessions to the judges, to the charges, said they'd been planning the job since November. If Leopold had not dropped his spectacles, if the spectacles had not been so uncommon, they would have gotten away with it. They would have gotten away with murder. Merlin von Tunhout It took two of them, my age, to kill one skinny Jew boy. Two of them, planning every detail. They rented an automobile, killed the kid, dumped the body, buried the boots and belt buckle in different places. They planned for weeks to kidnap, to kill, to see how it felt, to prove they could. It didn't matter about jail or being haunted by a ghost. It didn't even matter about going to hell. If I wanted to, I could kill someone all by myself. Wouldn't need anyone's help. I'd make damn sure I got some money for my trouble. <laughs> but they were rich Jew kids. What do you expect? Sarah Chickering Caught a German carp just below the falls. Measured two and one half feet and weighed 37 pounds. Caught it on plain old silk line. Esther helped. Leonora Sutter My daddy said Mr. Field, the uncle of Miss Stockwell, our landlady, was feeling poorly and I may, might take myself over to see if I could be of any use. When I got there, I washed up his dishes and swept his floor and boiled some potatoes for his supper. While I worked, he talked. At first I didn't listen. Mr. Field is a white man, with cheeks shrunk in enough to make his ears and his eyes too big for the rest of his face, and a neck so scrawny, not a collar exists that could tighten around it. He started in on war stories. Civil War. He told me about being a bugler for his regiment, but he said that didn't keep him out of danger. He was standing right beside a colonel who was shot through the middle. Mr. Field said, I saw the brigade of Negroes under General Burnside. Like a long streamer of dark silk they were. He stared off through his wire spectacles. The lenses so dirty 
Even if his eyes were clear, he couldn't have seen much. They were a sight, he said, that line of Negroes, marching toward the rebels, straight as a dress parade. What happened to them? I asked, expecting nothing good. Mr. Field said, Why, well, those Negro soldiers chased the rebels out, every one. I made a pie for Mr. Field. He kept talking. I don't know if he could see me well enough to judge the colour of my skin. I don't know if my colour mattered one whit to him. He just said, You come by any time, Miss Sutter. You move nice and quiet, and you make my kitchen smell like it did when I had a wife here. And I do like a flaky apple pie. I marched home in a straight line, with my back tall, and thought about that regiment of men like a streamer of dark silk.